In this video, I'm going to break down exactly how you can become more productive going into 2024 with your online business and earn 10 times more than anyone else can in this space. I'm going to teach you some of the key lessons that have helped me scale my agency up to 50K a month as of right now. And whether you are a beginner or you're advanced, you're making seven figures, you're making nothing online, I'm going to reteach you or, or actually teach you for the first time some of the most important lessons that have helped me and have helped countless of other entrepreneurs succeed. All right, so stick around. Until the end. Now, what you're looking at right here is essentially a kind of metaphor, right? A diagram that actually shows you how this, this kind of productivity thing works in my, in my view, right? So we have this tap here, okay? And what's coming out of the tap is your input, okay? So in the context of work, this is the hours you're putting in, right? The hours behind the laptop, um, you know, whatever you're doing, right? the hours that you're putting in to your business, okay? Or to your studies or to whatever it is. Um, but what we can also see here is the bottleneck, right? So this is essentially what the productivity um, kind of uh, the movement tries to solve, right? It tries to maximize um, the the yield, right, that you get um, and, and minimize or, or completely remove really ideally the bottleneck, okay? So what is the bottleneck? Well. The bottleneck is you feeling fatigued. The bottleneck is you getting distracted. The bottleneck is the thing, the things that inhibit uh, productivity like stress. Okay. I'll write a few of these, these things down because these are the things that we are trying to avoid. Okay. So it's stress, fatigue, right? Uh, distraction. And really what these things inhibit is focus. Okay, focus is what we're trying to cultivate here so that we can get as much yield as possible. And yield is results, okay? So this is, you know, money in this context, right? With business, you know, the more um, the more input you can get through into, and, and sort of convert into yield, the more money you're gonna make online with your business. Um, you know, I mean, really money, money is the number one thing we're looking for here when it comes to business. But obviously, depending on what your endeavor is, um, you're going to get more of the output that you are, or the, or the goal, sorry, the result that you're trying to achieve, okay? So we really want to maximize this. Um, and so, yeah, the point of this video is to essentially teach you how to uh, minimize uh, the effects of the bottleneck and get as much out as you can from the work that you're putting in. Because, you know, you could be putting in, you know, 10 hours here, right? You could be putting in 10 good hard hours of work, but because you're getting distracted, because you're getting tired, because you're going about your, your day ineffectively, okay? You're getting less out. You're probably getting maybe, you know, I'd say for most people, probably only like four productive hours out of those 10 hours, right? That's your, your conversion rate. Your conversion rate is 40% here, okay? Um, now you could be different. You could be doing pretty well at this, or maybe yours is even worse, right? Um, where you put you know 10 hours of, of work in, but really you're only getting four hours of productive work. Now, of course, the ideal amount here would be a hundred percent conversion rate, right? You you know you sit behind your desk for eight hours and you get eight pure hours of productivity where you are you know relentlessly moving towards your goals, ticking off your tasks and achieving your objectives, but that just doesn't exist, right? That just doesn't exist. I mean, you know, even robots like Elon Musk probably are only at you know 95, something of that nature, right? So don't be fooled into thinking that you can be perfect because obviously no one is. Um, but really the goal of this video is to help you get your, you know, your productivity conversion rate as high as humanly possible. Now we're going to talk about a few things here. We're going to talk about the tools that you can use to achieve this, uh, the strategy that you can take and really what this all looks like in practice. Okay. So let's start with the tools. Now, I think a big problem that a lot of entrepreneurs have is they just don't know what tools they need to be productive. Either they aren't using the right tools. They're just, you know, using nothing. Basically they're just talking to their clients and, 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 you know, really just kind of going about their day with no plan. Okay. With no structure, with no idea of what they're doing, or they use too many tools. They've got 20 different notes apps, 20 different calendars, and they are completely overwhelmed. So there's a, a, a good middle ground that we need to be striking here in order to succeed. And here's what has worked for me, okay? This is what has got me to half a million a year in sales. So what are the tools that we actually need? Well, in my view, we need a few things. We need notes, okay? We need a calendar. We need a um, uh, task. Manager, okay, and we need a diary or a journal, in my opinion. Okay, so four things there that I believe are absolutely essential to running your day and that I 
personally could not live without, okay? And we'll, we'll go up here to explain them and, and you know, so you can actually have a bit of space here. So, you know, why do you need these four things? Well, you need a notes app to document your lessons, what you've learned, okay? So potentially the lessons that you're extracting from videos like these on YouTube, lessons that you are learning as you build your business, what outreach methods are working for you, um, lessons that you learn in, in other areas, disciplines like philosophy, like psychology, all of the things that will flow back and actually benefit you in the long run in your business. All right. And, you know, this is incredibly important. Um, you know, Tiago Forte does a great job at you know, explaining this. He is a um, very, very famous um, you know, knowledge expert. Right. Uh, he kind of has come up with this system called the Paris system. Right. Which I use every single day. Uh, so P-A-R-A, -A, right? And that is essentially projects, areas, resources, and archive. Okay, and the, the purpose of, of this is essentially you structure whatever notes app you're using around this. Um, so you have your projects, right? The things that have specific deadlines that you're working towards. So this is so important for business to actually keep track of your projects and make notes about them and kind of add to them and, and build ideas around them. So for me, I can tell you right now, some of the projects that I'm working on are relaunching ads. We heavily ran ads in November. We're going to look to launch ads again uh, in February. And um, that's a big project because we've got to create, you know, we've got to make creative for that. We've got to make uh, ad copy, strategy, all of these things. Um, and that has a specific deadline, right? We want to launch that on the 1st of uh, February. And that project is going to be moved to uh, the archives because it's now complete, okay? Um, but we also have areas, okay? So areas of your life. These things don't have deadlines. They kind of, you know, and they exist, you know, uh, uh, separate necessarily of, of time. They're not bound by time. So this can be marketing. That's an area. Sales, uh, mindset, philosophy. All of these things are areas uh, of your life, like family, for example. And, you know, they don't just end. Um, and you can obviously, you know, compile notes around these things and, and your learnings around these things. The resources are very similar to areas. In my books, they're really just areas that have a lot less priority, okay? So areas are things that you're doing every single day and they can kind of be linked to projects, right? So your projects can be um, placed into specific areas, right? So for example, the ads project that I talk about would go into marketing. However, resources are things that you're not really actively working on. You just have a bit of an interest in. So it would be things like gardening, you know, things like um, French literature, something like that. And of course, archives are inactive projects, um, areas that you're no longer working on, resources you're no longer interested in, and just generally a kind of junk pile to put your, your things in. And it's actually incredibly useful because you can open that up and see all of the work that you've done, that you've completed, all of the areas that you used to be interested in. And it's, it's a very, very useful structure. So I highly recommend whether you're using Apple Notes, Notion, Obsidian, whatever tool you're deciding to use, you uh, build it like this, okay? And, and one more thing on this, don't overcomplicate it, okay? I love Apple Notes. It's the most simple tool out there. Um, I found that this can actually, if if you dive into this too deeply, it can actually just be a, a negative ROI factor, okay? If you make things, if you make a, a system that's too complex, you're using all these different tools, you're constantly rearranging them. You must remember this isn't work, okay? Making this and, and moving these into the correct folders and building a good uh, second brain, Tiago Forte calls it, it's not work. It's just organization. It's, it's kind of like cleaning or, or moving, you know, organizing things in your house. Um, it, it's very helpful once it's done, but it's not work itself. So I say just set this up once uh, and it will serve you forever into the future as you continue to learn about how to build a successful business. OK, because if you don't record your, your lessons, then you're going to just forget them. All right. And, and really, this is one of the most important things. So next is a calendar. OK. So this is a really interesting one that I want to break down for you. So I've had a calendar ever since I started, obviously, a business, right? A calendar is where you um, place, you know, the events that are happening in your life. So whether you're going for a haircut or whether you have a meeting in your business, a sales call, for example. But what I didn't realize is that really your tasks and your calendar should be the exact same thing. OK, and why is that? Well, if you have a task list that is completely separate from your calendar, it's really just a list of things that are never going to get done, right? Because tasks are constrained by time. You can only do so many tasks in a day. So really, if, if your task list is separate from, from your calendar, then um, you're, you're not going to be able to effectively complete what is on your task list. And of course, that is what is going to move you forward. So make your task list and your calendar the same thing. So wherever you're, you get your tasks from, whether it's recurring tasks, from your project management software like ClickUp, which I've talked about on this video, on this channel before, 
or you're you know going through your emails and that's where you extract your tasks from, whatever it is, instead of putting them into a task list, just put them directly on, on your calendar or do what I do, which is um, set up some kind of an automation. It could be with Zapier or it could be sort of an internal thing where when a task gets assigned to you, it automatically populates on your, on your Google calendar, for example. And that way you can then uh, structure a day like that. I've done that in the last few months. It's been so helpful. I've literally done that actually this year, at the start of this year, I've, I've done this and I've massively increased my productivity. So that is a really important lesson. Don't overlook uh, changes that you can make with your tools. Okay, and then finally, we've got a diary here, okay? Um, and so, you know, a diary, a journal, a diary, I suppose, is a bit feminine, but a journal, right? Have a daily journal, keep a daily journal. I can't recommend it enough. You know, this is more of a personal thing. You could argue whether this is actually gonna make you more productive. In my books, it does, because it allows you to gain clarity over what you really need to do. And there's nothing more effective and important than that, okay? Um, having a diary or having a journal every day, writing down what your thoughts, and at the end of the day, actually sitting down, setting 10 to 15 minutes aside and journaling. What am I grateful for today? What went well today? What didn't go well today? And finally, what do I need to do tomorrow? Will give you immense clarity over um, you know, the, the tasks that you need to pursue. And you know, don't think this is trivial. I know there will be people out there that say, oh, this is all just bullshit. You know, um, just, just, just sit down and work. And I, I do get that mentality, but if you don't know what you need to work on, then you're gonna get nowhere. And so having that every day is, is, has been very, very, very helpful for me and I'm sure it will be for you. Okay, and, and let's kind of move on to strategy here. Let's talk about you know, what should you work on, right? What do you need to work on, right? Every single day to become productive. And, and also how do you work? We'll, we'll touch on that when it comes to practice. But before we can talk about how best to work, let's talk about what we need to work on. And this is a trick that I learned from a very good mentor of mine, okay? And you're probably not gonna like it. Right, but it's uh, it's pain. Okay, so what do I mean by that? I truly believe that you should structure your day and plan your day and plan the things that you need to work on based on the level of pain that they um, they give you, right? Because often the tasks with the highest highest leverage, right? So we'll do this up here. High leverage often have very, they bring you a lot of pain, right? Um, psychologically speaking, this is. Um, and there's a good reason for that because your your mind and your body doesn't want to change, right? It wants to stay where it is. It wants to protect itself. This is two trillion years of evolution at work, okay? We don't want to change. We want to stay as the same animals that we are because our body is purely concerned with uh, self-protection and self-preservation, okay? So the tasks with the highest amount of leverage, the tasks that are most likely to move us forward and instigate change in ourselves, right? Taking us from, you know, $0 a month to a $10,000 per month entrepreneur or a $100,000 per month entrepreneur, a complete change in identity will cause us the most pain because our body doesn't want to go through that change, right? So sometimes it can be hard to determine which tasks have the most leverage. And so in order to do that, just look at which tasks cause you the most pain, right? So often that's going to be outreaching to customers or, or, you know, or marketing, right? Because, you know, that's going to get customers at your door, in your sale, through your door, onto your calendar, right? As, as a sales meeting or, you know, whatever it is, buying your products, whatever it is. And that is really what's going to move you forward, right? So, you know, doing tasks like building a website, doing tasks like, you know, this stuff here, that's not going to cause you that much pain. In fact, it might even be fun, but it's not, it's, it's a low leverage task, right? So it's not going to move you forward very much. And so really what you need to do is if we sort of draw like a little plan here, right? You should structure your day and your tasks. And obviously this is, this is what your calendar would look like, right? Based on, in order of leverage, right? So for me, at the start of my day, I start my work at 9 a.m. I do the thing that causes me the most pain, which is which is prospecting or marketing, right? Where I am calling up prospects, emailing prospects. Um, I'm going through all my comments and, and DMing um, potential customers, okay? Um, and that, that causes me a lot of pain. It, it causes most people a lot of pain because it's very boring and it is almost nerve wracking sometimes, okay? Um, but I do it first thing because your willpower is the strongest in the, in the morning, right? Your willpower is kind of like a muscle, okay? So where should we draw this? Let's draw, I'm running out of space here. I should probably rub some things off, shouldn't I? 
right? So we know we get the diagram. There we go. Right. So your willpower is kind of like little muscle, okay? Right. You just imagine that's kind of like a muscle. And so um, over the course of the day, it's going to atrophy, right? It's going to get weaker. It's going to get weaker and weaker and weaker. It's going to get skinnier, right? Um, and you're not going to be able to do the stuff that you need to do that's going to move you forward. Um, and so you should do the, the most difficult things at the start of the day. You can try this out, all right? If you if you start your day, right? And this is something Hamza talks about, funnily enough. He's a very big YouTuber. Uh, he, he, he used to put a chocolate bar on his desk, right? Because he his thing was um was was overeating and, and junk, you know, junk eating, right? Uh, and he would basically just leave it on his desk through the duration of the day um, and, you know, watch himself and watch his thoughts, right? And I believe he was always most tempted at the end of the day compared to the start of the day. So this is just kind of common knowledge, right? So that is how you should structure your day. So number one should be um, whatever you hate most, whatever you, you know, don't really want to don't, don't, don't do. So usually it's going to be like cold email or writing your content for your social media, okay? The marketing, the sales, and then at the end of the day, you could look at uh, doing projects like this, right? Um, you know, uh, power, for example, or, you know, website building or, you know, whatever it is. Cause, cause by the end of the day, you know, it's, it's easier to do these things. Okay. So that is really the strategy I follow. And at the end of every day, uh, what I do is I, is I journal. Okay. So, you know, when it comes to productivity, people like to talk about routines. Um, I think 99% of morning routines are bullshit. Um, I wake up. I uh, make my bed, I drink some water, I have a shower, um, and then I eat breakfast and get to work, basically, with a coffee. Um, that is literally my morning routine, okay? I do not think routines lead to productivity. I think it's important to have a routine, so do the same thing every day, wake up at the same time every day, um, but I don't think it, it really leads to more productivity in the day, uh, except for this, right? So that's my morning, but in the evening, I do two things. I journal, okay, I journal. Uh, I clear my head, I write down my thoughts from the day, and then I plan tomorrow, today, right? And this is a huge lesson that obviously um, Sam Ovens has talked about, right? Um, so plan tomorrow, today. So do this um, the day before you actually have to, to start that work. And uh, obviously you structure your day based on the tasks that have the most leverage, right? So that is pretty much the strategy to figure out how to um, minimize the bottleneck and increase the yield that you're gonna get from the work that you put in, all right? So now let's talk about practice here, okay? So, you know, when you figured out what to do, how do you go about doing it? What does it look like? So for me, I, I am a big fan of the Pomodoro techniques. So this is kind of like an age old productivity guru thing. Um, but, you know, what I see a lot of entrepreneurs do is they just sit down at their desk and they don't move for six hours, right? Like they just are glued to their screens for hours on end and you know, uh, that's, that's their work. And what's gonna happen there is, you know, you might start your day at sort of 80% productivity doing that, right? Because obviously this, gets, this stuff gets reset every single day, right? In the morning you're fresh. Um, but, but naturally, as, as anyone does, your, your, your strength, your willpower, your focus is gonna decline from you know, 80% uh, down to sort of, I'd say, I don't know, you know, it depends on the person, but maybe to 40%, right? And in order to mitigate this, what you need to do is you need to refresh yourself and you need to uh, move your attention away from um, this kind of, this hard work. So, you know, what I do honestly every single day is I do 25 minutes on, right? And then five minutes off. Now, I know a lot of people like to work longer than this. I did as well, honestly. I was like, this is way too short. I don't know how anyone can do this. Um, and I used to, you know, do sort of 50 minutes on and, and 10 minutes off. But I've often found that this allows for more intensity. This allows for more aggression with your tasks. When you're working on something for an hour, the first 10, 20 minutes are pretty good and then it just gets pretty slow and you're kind of clicking around. You might go on Twitter for a second, you might go on Instagram for a second, right? Um, and we'll talk about you know, inversion here in a bit. Um, and so I really, I've switched this and it's been really good for me. I, I, I really attack my tasks, I melt them. One thing that I've noticed is, um, Really good entrepreneurs literally just melt problems, right? They're excited about problems and then they just melt them in real time. You can literally see problems getting squashed. I've worked with um, some alongside very, very successful entrepreneurs uh, and I've seen them work and, and that's really they attack their problems. So this is gonna allow you to be more aggressive and intense in your work, whether it's setting up a cold email 
system whether it is um i don't know uh you know uh dming people that you need to be dming um you know almost doesn't sound like work in a way but that is really how we do our marketing these days and uh yeah that's gonna allow you to do that okay so i recommend you do that so you know go through your list uh with the pomodoro technique active there's a bunch of different apps that are going to allow you to do it um and then finally let's talk about inversion right so how do we just piece all this together it really comes down to this just instead of trying to be productive or instead of trying to focus right in your day just try not to be uh distracted that's the easiest thing to do so instead of thinking how can i be focused how can i be focused you know i'm working but i'm really you know not getting much done don't think about it like that just inverse the problem right this is a classic lesson that many many successful entrepreneurs can tell you just inverse it or invert it sorry and just focus on how to not be distracted so you would you would say for example okay i'm gonna only have one tab open so i'm because i'm not gonna be distracted i'm gonna um you know be in a room where there's not a massive window that i can look out of constantly i'm going to be in a room where there's natural light you know from some kind of source um because that's going to allow me to be more focused right instead of you know bright synthetic lights um, I'm going to be in a room where, you know, there's no one else. It's just me because I can then, you know, not get distracted talking to anyone or listening to anyone's conversations. So um, it's really just about inversion, right? Flipping the problem on its head and just, yeah, focusing on how not to be distracted. And that really is uh, the secret to maximizing your yield, right? Maximizing the amount that you get from... Um, you know, the, the work that you put in. And I, I can't really stress how important this is, okay? I'm going to illustrate for you something more quickly and then we'll, we'll end, okay? But this is a very, very important point, so stick around. Um, if you think about entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship is a very long game, okay? It happens over years and years and years and years. And I'm really, I'm a baby in this game. Like, I, I'm a year and a half in, I'd say. Uh, so I know nothing. <laughs> um, but I know, I know a bit more than someone who hasn't, you know, done a, run a business for a day. Um, so that's why I make these videos. But, you know, entrepreneurship happens over a very long timeline. You know, you know whether you start, let's say you start at 20, you know, and uh, you finish, you retire, you hang up the hat at 50, let's say. Right. I mean, I mean, you could play forever. Like you could play, you could be running businesses in your 70s. But, you know, so what we've got here, 30, 40, ah, mess that up a little bit. But yeah, um, you know, so let's say you've got 30 years here. Okay. So what someone who is who understands this is going to be able to do is they're going to be able to achieve significantly more than you, okay? Because, you know, let's say for every, uh, you know, one year, the average person gets, let's just make up a currency, one unit, right, of, uh, of productivity in their year, right? Obviously, a unit can be made up of many, many different days of, of, uh, of work. But, you know, that's the average person, right? And that's the person who kind of, has a conversion rate from uh, input to yield of, of let's say, uh, 10%, right? And imagine a perfect person who had a conversion rate of 100% and so therefore produced 10 units of productivity for every one year they put in. At the end of this, um, you know, this person, right, this person A, would have uh, 30 units of productivity built into their career, outputted into their career, and this person would simply have 300. And as we know, what is you know one unit in business? It's it's, it's money, right? So say 30 units buys you um, you know three million. This person's going to have three million. This person's going to have 30 million, or even you know this person's going to have uh, 30 thousand or you know, say 300,000, right? And this person's going to have 3 million. You know, whatever it is, person B is going to have 10x more than person A because this really just manifests and compounds over years and years and years, right? Um, you know, this is this is just one example, but it can get crazy when you think about it by day, by month, by year, by decade. So when you sit down to work, make sure you are maximizing, right? This is what you can see here, this little gap. Uh, you are minimizing this gap and maximizing the amount of yield you get in for your work because you will get so much further than everyone else. I cannot, I cannot stress this enough, right? Most entrepreneurs sit down uh, with, for, simple, for doing simple tasks and they take way too long. They just take way too long to do things. You just need to be aggressive, aggressive, aggressive and just get all this done. And, um, and yeah, this is kind of how I see productivity in 2024. Um, 
I think this is incredibly important, right? This is really, really important to understand. Cool. All right. So I'll uh, I'll leave it at that. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. I hope you you know learned a few things. Hope you're still enjoying the, the whiteboard format. It's a little bit more interactive, a little bit more fun for me. Um, yeah, my name's George. Uh, as I said, um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, please, please like, subscribe and comment down below. It helps the YouTube algorithm know that I know what I'm talking about to some extent. And it will also show you uh, more interesting videos uh, like this. And if you want to follow along and watch me kind of implement this stuff and watch me build a business, you can follow my Twitter down below at George Clements. There'll be a link there. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.